Hello and welcome. This is the first game that I've recorded that I, of me playing on this channel. Um, so I played the game the other week. However, I didn't consider to record it at the time. So this is a bit of a post-game observation and recording, a bit of commentary on how I played and a bit of a, a digest of what I did well and maybe what I need, still need to learn. So it's always good to coordinate with the team what everyone's taking. We can see Kaz has uh, four DDs, which end up being rails. Uh, Scorch Shadow is running two beams and a rail DD. Antares is, is going to pro provide our rail uh, battleship support with some scouts. And I've got a heavy cruiser um, with guns fitted out and two corvettes that are going to provide uh, escorts as well as comms jamming. And then we've got two uh, pinard corvettes with a bit of offensive weapons as well. So we'll go through all that. All right, so we've loaded in. I've got three deployment groups. I've got the heavy cruiser with the two escorts uh, being in one. And then I've got the two pinard corvettes uh, in their own ones to deploy. So each of the pinard each of the pinard corvettes has a frontline radar, a pinard. Uh, it's got point defense uh, in the form of two defenders, and it also has offensive. Um, and it has some offensive weapons in the terms of a VLS with a, a few various different pieces. We'll go through the guns when we actually deploy. So uh, we can see um, Amino of Carl Carlin. That's uh, Antar. That's Antares. I'm pretty sure. Yep, with the uh, 07. So I'm going to support him on the left hand side. Uh, Taz, who's Joe, is uh, Scorch Shadow, I'm pretty sure, with the Rail DDs. So he'll end up moving around to the right-hand flank. And as you can see, the first thing I probably should have done is actually position the two Corvettes with the pinards closer together. So we've got uh, one in sort of the middle of the map, and then one to off to the left. And with the way that the Elint works, they need to actually be together to triangulate. And the, because I don't know whether or not the rest of the people on the team have pinards... That's an assumption that I made, which I think proved wrong because I, I don't remember it ever being seen, is that I couldn't actually triangulate anything. So um, that's a bit unfortunate. If I was to play it again, I'd probably have them either both on the left-hand side or, you know, both in the middle and then and try and triangulate that way. But, you know, you live and learn. So there's 07 Scout. So I'm going to move the uh, first pinard, pinard number one, off to the left-hand flank. I'm going to roll it so that as it comes around that corner, the pinard is active. And I'm going to do the same thing with pinard two. But with this one here, I'm actually going to have it so the pinard faces to the middle of the map. Uh, I do screw around <laughs> trying, to, trying to do this. Um, I do need to play more to remember a few things, but um, eventually I get there and we end up getting the pinard facing to the center. Pinards aren't, you know, sort of continuous. You do need to, um, they do rely on your radar range. So with frontline radars, you're probably only getting out to maybe like seven or eight kilometers, I think, with, with the pinards. Don't hold me to those numbers. Which is another reason why uh, I wouldn't have been able to spot anything that's off in the distance because my pinard range would have ran out. So it does turn out that one of the other team members have a pinard. You can see it playing down the bottom. That probably got a spotter, a uh, frigate or corvette that's really able to provide that long range uh, scouting capability down with Taz. So we've got the guns now coming around. You can see a bullseye on the front of my heavy cruiser and I'm just running all guns. Uh, I I'm, may not be most optimal, but I, I do enjoy the cannons and I do enjoy the heavy cruiser is my favorite model in the game. So the rails are moving up and around uh, by Mer. I do wish that they we had the uh, prefixes or the player's names in front of this. It would just be really handy when you're, you're watching it back because you start to learn the people's names but uh, on the, the front screen, but after that, not really. Got some jamming coming out, a uh, mix of comms and um, radar jamming. And you can see that we've identified someone around D and we've got some people, and it looks like we've got another track located sort of down and below. Gun heavy cruisers coming around. So on the heavy cruiser, that loadout is, all right, here we go. We've got a Corvette trying to capture A. We've got some Thunderheads coming out to try and destroy that. Likewise, we've got some additional missiles now targeting the original launching ships on our team. So those beam DDs are getting some 
counter missile fire against them. So the jamming that Corvette, really trying to take it out. If they cap A, uh, it doesn't, it's really hard to capture that center one. So a fast ship is best, um, but it does need to survive. And whilst that's pop chaff, you can see the beams coming out, starting to destroy it. Actually doesn't make it. Um, we actually don't make it. And there's that first battleship of the game that we, we can see. So track 1408, that'll be around for a long time. I'll throw a warning out with the signals and we've got some missiles still coming in. Now my heavy cruiser does have an intelligence center so we should be able to get a significant amount of um, intelligence. I'm gonna try and move up and away because I don't wanna go head to head with that cannon Solomon. So it's got all guns, even though Antares is firing down with his rails. So at that range, the rail battleship should win um, due to gun spread um, degrading over time from the enemy ship. But still, you know, I don't want to go head to head with it. So just coming back to my ships, um, my heavy cruiser has guns. It's got a blanket jammer on the front and the, sorry, it's got a bullseye on the front. It's got a blanket jammer on those top mounts near the bridge to the left and right side. Uh, I call them left and right jam just because I'm, you know, simple like that. And then we've got two escorts that will rotate around with point defense. Um, sorry, the heavy cruiser's got flock. And then on that, they've also got comms jammers. So I'm comms jamming, I'm blanket jamming. That sprinter uh, didn't end up capturing A actually. We ended up getting it just at the last moment. So that is quite lucky. And it's got its pods ejecting. So that's a dead, that's a dead kill. Um, and I think I unmarked that. So it really should be marked as destroyed. I've got the pinards uh, with a heading and roll to try and keep the pinards facing forward or to where I think the enemy will be. I should have moved pinard two in support of Mur or brought it over to my side. It actually sort of sat there for a while and it wasn't really beneficial. So we've got some missiles coming out. I have no idea where these are going. Uh, they are thunderhead, so they are weak to uh, jamming. And I, I think I do get a bit worried that they are gonna target my ship because they start to spread off. Now that could be because I was already jamming that area. Um, as you can see, they start to, they were already in the cone when they were fired, but I've got a feeling that they're gonna come for my pinard ship. So I'm gonna fire my blanket jammer just up into that vague area so that as that radar comes through, I'm gonna be okay. Had a bit of trouble with the sphere widget and the camera, but uh, ultimately it looks like we've thrown it off and you know, all those missiles sail harmlessly into the ether, but we did take some shots onto escort number two. So I'm gonna to start to move my ships away, particularly the escorts, because they're the fastest, to try and preserve them. We finally get a lock on the Solomon. So my gunshots should be a little bit more accurate now. And we're gonna comms jam it in return just to try and make it lose our track and protect our escorts. Antares has lost his scout up to the top. I do love the reactor blooms and explosions in this game. It is absolutely great. So we're going to have to assist now with um, locking capabilities. Here you can see I'm moving away uh, my ships. We've got the heavy cruiser to move up and away. We're going to try and move it towards C. And we can't see anything from D. And however, the rails are both from Mer and from Antares have seen those reins and are engaging it. So that's what one of them would have seen with their um, their pinards early on. Probably could turn that jammer off as well. So Escort 2, it's taken a bit of a beating. And what I should have done with Escort 2 is I should have either moved it off to do its own thing or um, I should have set the whole formation to loose because I think that slows me down because that drive is damaged. It's going to degrade our performance uh, on the thrusters. Yep, that's destroyed and always good to mark it killed for the team. Now we weren't on voice or anything like that. So we're commuting primarily through, um, well, in the in-game chat. That Solomon's still firing HE. And again, I'm gonna just counter with more jamming, trying to get that heavy cruiser up and away. I have now been locked by that battleship, so I do wanna get out of there, get out of there as soon as possible. So 
So you can see the spread of the uh, 450 millimeter HE. It looks like we've deflected one there or it bounced off with the sparks, but the rest of them are actually hitting pretty hard. You can see that they're all getting in there. And um, as you can see, my 450 and the rails are also hitting apart from those three as I spoke, um, but it looks like it's taking damage. So it's a good sort of mix of shots in there. But over time, that the duel between myself and the heavy cruiser, would, I would have lost. So that's why I need to get out and away. Now I finally decided to move Pinard 2 off to the right to help um, Mur and his rail DD as I start to move through the center of the map more towards sea. I'm going to take cover behind this rock using terrain to break line of sight. One to hide myself from radars, um, as well as just shield myself from any incoming fire. The escorts are fine, so I'm going to throw them back into position now. I'm going to have one off to the right and one sort of up and above, so that way we um, always maintain the fact that we have sort of a holistic defense for point defense um, and that we're not actually obstructing our heavy cruiser with um, guns with, with the line of sight. Yep, I can't fire through there. All right, Pinard 1 sort of done its job. I'm going to move it up and forward and keep it scouting going forward. And likewise with Pinard 2, I'm going to continue to move it. Now, there's nothing behind this rock that I can see at the moment. So I'm going to try and move up towards C. So between myself and Mer, we're sort of coming around and through the center of the map. Antares is still uh, positioning his uh, rail battleship sort of moving around to the up and left and then we've still got uh, down below Taz with his beams and his one rail. Again another dead range you can see it from the lifeboats there's nothing else down there so I know that that ship's done and I should have marked that as killed but I didn't for whatever reason and I should actually be in front of Mer here that pinard should be scouting for those rails, not the other way around. Um, and that's just a learning point that I think I'll take away next time is that if I've got scouting ships, they should be scouting. This was just released after the pinard patch. So I really wanted to try and get some of that triangulation going. Uh, I didn't really do it. All right, so there's something behind that rock there. I think Antares is picking that up, that or it's me, one of the two. All right, missiles are being launched by that. Uh, I believe that they are Hurricane. All right, so we've got a destroyer there. So all right, Hurricane missiles coming out. They're going down towards Taz. And we've got some more Keystones down below. Now I'm gonna comms jam those destroyers. I'm also gonna try and comms jam those Hurricanes and just make sure, or, or see if I can actually throw off their, their jamming signal. I'll come over the top of C with the pinard and pinard one we're going to move sort of up and around uh, behind the back of D. Lots of missiles being thrown out by those uh, enemy destroyers so they're likely just missile destroyers and not rails or beams. We've got beams from Taz being fired across and track 3026 that's locked is actually dead and we'll see that in a second but I'm going to comms jam that try and throw off their targets whilst we fire down some 450 millimeter HE. Could have pre-rolled that, but um, I didn't really know that they were there until we rocked up, so just something. But you can see that really trying to turn is probably the hardest thing, so always pointing your ship and having those bearings is important. Yep, 3028 is destroyed, so we can mark that as dead, and then we can switch our fires to 9297. There we go, the 450 should be just about ready. There's our first salvo. Uh, they all hit, which is great. And we've got some additional ones coming in, so that'll help. But I think Taz would have, you know, realistically uh, cleaned that up by himself. He didn't really need my help. All 
bring pin on two into the center. And we're talking about where we're, we're going to go. So maybe Antares is rightly calls out that look, let's not all go to sea because well, that's a waste of time. Those destroyers are going to get there before me. So I'm going to move forward still just to try and get some better angles down below. Uh, and I'm also going to move to try and cap A with one of my pinards, pinard number two. Now that this is where I find out there's actually another battleship on this on the field. Before that, we knew that there was one off to the left. There was guns, um, which is that one there, 1408. But then there's also 4836, which is another gun battleship. Now at this point, the enemy is ahead just slightly. No one's got A. Um, and we are sort of even for points, so we need to break this somehow. A is hard to get to just because it's so open, so easy to, to be taken out. But we are going to try that with Pinard 2, but we're also going to try and take C. And by therefore, we'll take the lead in point captures and hopefully in the lead. The enemy's got a lock on Escort 1. And I'm, I'm sort of okay with that because it means they're not firing at me. And I try with Escort 2 to fire a bunch of Thunderheads, but if you'll see, that's the one that doesn't have any power and is also on fire. Now, I don't have any damage control in here, and in the future I think I may. So the fire is slowly degrading my capability and in the formation it's slowing me. But with that power, as I think about this now, I'll come back to this thought. I'm trying to fire some Thunderheads around this rock to get to 6231. And you can see that I'm having some issues with the Sphere Widget. And because I didn't follow my rule of positioning and cameras, um, so it's quite hard. I've gone, I'm very aware that the Thunderheads are going to have to take time to, to find and to rotate um, around once they find. So I don't want to go too far on a complicated waypoint. Um, but ultimately that's all for nothing because Escort 2 doesn't have enough power. And this is where I could have fixed this straight away is by turning off the radar within Escort 2. That would have saved a fair amount of power, which could have then been divert could have then been diverted to the VLS system to fire, because this came out after the um, power update where power is only drawn by active components, and because the radar is always considered on and searching, it can consists or sorry, it counts as active. So if I turn that off and receive the comms tracks, um, I would have from the rest of the ships. I could have actually used that ship more. Lots of hurricanes there being fired at Taz. Uh, destroys one of his uh, destroys in the center there, going for A. That's unfortunate, but they expended a lot of points on that. Now there's two battleships below me firing upwards, and I'm still trying to get out of their line of fire. You can see the Pinards picking up the. You can see the Pinard from Pinard Two is picking up. Um, tracks around D and so I'm going to move pinard 1 to try and cap the back of D because I'm confident that those two battleships had moved out of the way. You can see one there and one sort of going for, for A or for C. Um, I'm not happy with my positioning so I'm trying to get behind some terrain to cover myself. But yeah, I want to get pinard 1 down into D. It is fastest and, and that'll take us and hope and give us another point. Here you can see we've now captured C, or oh, we did that a couple seconds ago, and we are just about to go and take the lead. There we go, we have now taken the lead, so it's now three to one. Quick DC board check, I've got six restores, but I'm happy that oh, I don't need to use anything yet. So we're going to start to rotate around this asteroid to take out that destroyer that I couldn't get any missiles on. We are target locked by one of these battleships. So we're going to throw some comms down there to try and break um, their ability to receive any track input. Bit of radar jamming, so I'm going to fire some squalls. Probably not the best decision that I made because if you look at Escort 1, um, when I have it in frame, it's actually just dumping a lot of those missiles <laughs> into the asteroid out the front. Um, so not all those missiles actually go anywhere. At least at least three, I think. So I wasted half of those. So we've set a heading on the heavy cruiser, so we can just get that lateral drift around uh, around that asteroid, so that we can hit that destroyer. And I think we previously targeted that track, so we should be rolling uh, correctly before we get there. 
Mer, however, is already dropping some missiles into that destroyer, so it is fine. You can see it taking uh, reactionary measures with its chaff uh, as the rest of its rails target 3021, which is sitting way behind, uh, and I can't actually put any rounds or effects on that. I'm trying to get some locks down on one of these battleships just so that Antares, who's sitting back with his, battlesh um, his battleship with rails, will be able to do something, but I can't seem to get that lock to occur. And there we go, we finally slide out. We're gonna fire both 450s and we're gonna fire some uh, light missiles. Uh, sorry, we're gonna fire some uh, 120. I'll try to dumb fire some squalls here. That would have actually lined up, but I, for some reason I wanna think, oh, I've gotta put the line through that destroyer. Yeah, didn't work. It was dead anyway. Mark it dead, move on. Remember to clear your fire. I don't think I did that straight away. You don't want to keep wasting your rounds. You can see I'm continuing to shoot at something that's dead while taking rounds uh, from the battleship below. So just remember to, yeah, to clear those, um, clear your fire once you've finished shooting at something with that CF button between uh, signal and PPR. And you saw me start to move behind that ledge. I finally found some terrain to get behind. I'm going to just move so that I can continue to engage the destroyers, but I can't be engaged from below. Forgot about this pinard. Yep, could have kept moving, could have captured it earlier. Uh, sometimes it's just, you know, you, you think about other things. The second scout from Antares actually does make that capture, so uh, that's really good. I should have set the waypoint up earlier. I, frankly, I should be clearing the roll and heading on that so we can use the main thrusters and be faster. Someone's had a reactor explosion. Not sure who it was, to be honest. So yeah, there we are. We're we're safe now. You can see that um, if you look at the um, unit cards for ships three, four, and five, we are not spotted. Uh, although actually we have locked on two of them. No, nope, it's out. We are now safe. So now I can just drift backwards and forwards over this piece of terrain. I finally clear fire as I was talking about before. So I can pop out, put some shots out, and then move back across. Still got that heading set as uh, that battleship moves into capture point E. So one of the battleships has um, now moved over point A, so they're capping that, but we've got four to one. So we are making a, a pretty good lead, I would say. And with most of these destroyers starting to fall and two battleships, the battleships suffer now from the fact that their mobility isn't as fast. That sounds, you know, a little bit like no duh, but uh, it's the downside of having too many battleships um, is that if you don't have anything smaller to capture everything sort of towards this mid to, to late game, it can be a bit hard to come back. I'm going to move that Pinard 1, try and catch something else. Um, try and move around to the back of D uh, whilst Antares and I both start to put railgun fire and 450s uh, into the battleship that captured A. I generally set up the 450s in a sort of a front and a, a back configuration in terms of uh, weapon grouping. That way if you want to bow tank you can, but at this point in the game I'm just going broadsides. I'm going to try and fire some Thunderheads down now. I don't know if they actually ended up launching. I can't remember. It doesn't look like they do. I wonder if it's the VLS that's on fire. We did take some uh, shots, so I, I do... Oh, yeah, there we go. Just one. Yeah, it's super weird. See, someone's done a burn through, and we can see the... Uh, okay, so it was a range from the A that caught, uh, that captured A. So we've uh, thrown down some fire. That wasn't a Solomon at all. It was a Reigns. Maybe there is another Solomon somewhere. We'll find out. Yeah, it is. There's a Reigns. So it's going to try and take off now. It was pretty well hidden, actually. If it wasn't for the burn through, we wouldn't have seen that. But 
in a top down position, 450 is firing uh, down to the top. We should get be able to get the hits, especially with a lock. Yep, so all of those hit. That's 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 pretty solid. I've been told it's got a condition of about 57%. Rounds continually continue to go down, and we are going to try again to way path some missiles. Uh, from escort to at some point i should learn that this is not working and stop but i don't know if i do all right so we're going to try escort one There's still that missile DD hiding somewhere behind D. You'll see it in a few minutes, but those hurricanes are being fired in. I'm trying to help, but I'm not going to be fast enough. And that wipes out uh, Antari's uh, second scout. So it's just his rail battleship now, and we still haven't destroyed that range. Now remembering that this pinard uh, does have some offensive capability in Thunderheads and uh, uh, Hurricanes. We've also got some Squalls in there just to fill some points out. I wanted a mix of um, Waypoint Guidable as well as sort of direct targeting capabilities. Um, really thinking that if I found any other scouts, I'd be able to engage with them uh, with a mix of those two. So even if they did pop chaff, we would have been okay. Um, didn't really do that in this game just because I didn't really enter that scenario that I sort of prepared for. So there it is. I should start firing missiles now. Yep, so hurricanes first. Yeah, it's probably not going to work just because of the, uh, the movement of the ship, but we are locked. Now one thing I should have done here is kept driving forward, but I stopped. Uh, shouldn't have stopped, should have kept going because their ship was still rotating around because he's now firing a counter round of missiles and you can see my point defense working, but with that amount of missiles coming in, it's sort of a sayonara sort of thing. We only had one because we didn't have the roll to get both facing forward. Would we have been able to survive? I don't think so, even if two were there. But you know, again, Important to have your placement um, and your heading and your roles set when going into something, especially if you know something's there. So point learned. Heavy cruisers just hanging around up the top because I uh, um, can't really go head to head with those missiles. So Antares calls for a bit of assistance with 1408, uh, the gun battleship that went and captured E. So, you know, two to three now, we're at 700, they're at five. So he's got rails, um, Antares has rails and 1408 has guns. So they want to close, guns want to close in, rails want to keep distance. And you can see that as he backs up. So I'm going to come around that terrain, uh, try and help out with my guns whilst I move one of my uh, escorts down to capture E. You can see just how far it has to go down because I was scrolling through uh, elevation for a while and then I realized, oh, look, I've still got Pinard 2 back here. This is the one that should be doing it. Um, I didn't really do a lot with that one, but that's okay. So I'm going to start uh, jamming. I'm going to start firing. Just thinking as well, you know, having Pinard 2 sitting back actually gave me something to, to capture later on if i committed everything and lost everything early then i'd sort of be in the same position as the red team trying to move around but um yeah uh, i'm finally cutting uh, escort two away no i'm not i'm just re repositioning it we've got locks on it which is good if we zoom in you can see that our 450 and our rail guns are doing some damage some good shots uh, from antares DC teams are no doubt uh, working hard on 1408. But if we have a closer look, you can see that there's a lot of fires and that there's a lot of things on uh, that are burning. Three of its top cannons are just are burnt out, um, or at least two of them, plus its uh, bullseye radar on the front. So it's only got that rear 
sorry, the front two and the bottom one are destroyed. And then you've got the back one, which is still working. But my 450s are making good work. And we've so they'll be doing some, you know, fragmenting and uh, taking out internal components. Probably won't kill it, but it'll do some damage. And um, Antares himself, you know, he's moving past now as he uh, moves out and away and continues with his railgun fire. I'm still trying to fire these Thunderheads from Escort 2. It's just not working. Um, I don't learn in this game, clearly. Yeah, but we'll just keep jamming, keep jamming. You know, we're at uh, 800 points now. We've got 200 to go, so this is almost a foregone conclusion. I'm going to move Escort 2 to go cap point A. Uh, so we're going to leave that formation. Should have done it a while ago, but I wasn't sure where that other battleship went. Just keep those jamming up. Hope we'll uh, try and get let Antares get some distance. Yeah, you can see the rails from Mur coming down from the top. We've got the lock. And you can see a fair amount of railgun shots going into that sort of grey area behind the rear of the thrusters. It does look immobilized because it's not moving, and I reckon we've probably hit some power. It's got its forward thrusters still working, but nothing's happening from the rear, and that sort of gives me that impression, but I could be wrong. I incorrectly say that all its cannons have been lost except one railgun. Uh, actually, all of its cannons bar one cannon. Not It didn't have any rails at all. So this keystone just comes out of nowhere from Dizzy, which, you know, frightened the hell out of me. Um, right, this is not a position where Antares wants to be, and it's great positioning by Dizzy because I didn't see him at all. Um, he's just got a perfect shot. I'm going to try and move, um, whilst I'm still moving my Pinard 2 down, I'm trying to get my Thunderheads to go down and around uh, this asteroid. And we've got some Hurricanes being fired at Antares. And just look at the amount of Reposts being fired. He does pretty well, actually, with all the Chaff. Uh, there was a, well, Chaff doesn't affect Hurricanes, but with the Reposts, he did, he did really well in... in countering a lot of that so we get the thunderheads off guns still being fired down on 1408 i'm marking um, dizzy as a higher priority at the moment got some chaff out here come my thunderheads coming down and around uh, this is basically like tutorial six but um, i'm not dealing with any um what would you call it point defense we get one hit but the chaff picks up two and three and i get worried am i going to get another one uh turns out i do it's got an interruption jammer on it as well. And now that we've got line of sight, in come the hurricanes. I'm gonna fire some scrolls. I really didn't have to fire scrolls. Antares has so many reposts still firing. You can see just salvo after salvo after salvo being fired. Darksiders calling the game there. Um, we are capturing point E, which is where we are at the moment. We've got the squalls out, we've got the hurricanes out. The hurricanes are just going to be able to continue to hit. Um, Antari is doing a bit of defense with uh, a lot of flak. We haven't seen Dizzy fire for a while, so we must have hit something in that beam, but he definitely did get that ambush, and it was a great ambush. Uh, I'm trying to get out and away with that Pinard. I've got no offensive capabilities. I don't know what the beam is, but if I'm looking at the replay, you can see those sparks. So it is destroyed um, or at least damaged, but I just want to get out of there now because I've done my job. We've got three points. That's Solomon's dead. You can see the space oil hanging around and you can see the lifeboats. So 1408, just taking a long time to be destroyed, so you can really see the value of a, a well-built battleship. All right, there's that other um, battleship. I had no idea really where it went for a long time, but it's firing broadsides, 450s. A little ship's not spotted, uh, the heavy cruiser is. 
uh, 50 points to the victory condition. At this point I realise, oh wait a minute, if I leave they can capture that point. So I start to move, move back down. Um, and I'm now trying to get some top-down shots. Uh, for the heavy cruiser, we've got the rail support being fired from the DDs out the back. So, you know, happy with that and good positioning by Murr. And we just keep jamming. He's still got uh, that belly gun good to go. And top. Just the player list here. It'd be good if we had the, um, the prefixes in there, actually as well. So Dizzy's out, he's surrendered, so it's a, I think, two on four still at the moment, but the victory condition's gonna proc any moment. I don't think I ended up destroying that um, DD, and it's probably limped itself over to go capture point uh, C. Surprised that Escort 1 still going, to be honest, even with fires on board. Escort 2 can, um, survived a long time with fire. That's it. We hit 1,000 points. So, yeah, some, some learnings from here. Um, I would have had the pinards together a little bit more. The power management with Escort 2, I think it was, with the radar to get the VLS fired, uh, firing a little bit quicker, that would have been a smart idea. Um, and otherwise, I think just a bit more decisiveness with decision-making would have been good. I think the Heavy Cruiser, as you can see there, you know, um, Antares has done 31,000 damage, you know, the battleship um, from uh, Bregger Sills doing 21,000, uh, Darksiders has done 12. But when we slowly come down to my um, heavy cruiser, we didn't. It doesn't really do as much damage. No, I actually don't scroll down there, so uh, that's unfortunate. All right, well, that's a bit of a, a replay commentary by me. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned some stuff. I certainly did uh, watching this back. Um, good experience, and I'll start to put up a few more gameplay videos, both of me playing. And talking during the game and then i think a couple of these sort of post-game commentary reviews uh, as well because I, I quite enjoyed that all right that's it for today take care